Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're just gonna give folks a moment to come in from the waiting room. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as a reminder to all folks who are joining us, so please do remain on mute unless or until you are presenting before the board. We will give just another moment to make sure that folks have uh, joined from the waiting room and have connected to audio. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, May 24th, 2023. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning. My name is Kathleen Joyce, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Commissioner Liam Sachs. Liam Kiana Sachs, excuse me. That was a first. Thank you. And once again, as a reminder, please do remain on mute unless or until you are presenting before the board. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chair and commissioners. Following the questions, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. And to accommodate a scheduling conflict, we will be taking two items out of order this morning before returning to the top of the agenda. We will be taking items six and 24 out of order and starting with those. So we'll now be calling item number six uh, yeah, this morning, calling item number six, SCJM Boston Beverage Company, Inc. Doing business as Four Seasons at One Dalton, located at One Dalton Street. Holder of an in-holder all-alcoholic beverages license. Has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Farid Kandalap to Ahmed Ali Yakut. Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Uh, good morning, everyone. Andrew Upton, Upton, Connell, and Devlin. Uh, with me is the proposed manager of record, Ahmed Yakut. Uh, this is a change of manager only. There are no other changes to any aspect of the licensed premises. Uh, Mr. Yakut has 17 years with the Four Seasons, most recently uh, in the Las Vegas Four Seasons, where he supervised uh, the sale and service of all alcohol and food products. Uh, he had no violations and no problems there. He has moved to Massachusetts. He is a U.S. resident, a mass citizen. He's familiar with the rules and regulations. And as I said, he has considerable experience in the hotel industry. And with that, we're glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Attorney Upton, and uh, thank you for joining us today. I don't have any questions at this time. No questions for me. Thank you. None for me either. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as uh, stated, we will also be calling item number 24 out of uh, order this morning, calling item number 24, Neil Kent 44 Inc. doing business as City Wine, Spirits and Smoke Shop located at 44 Winter Street, has applied for a retail package store all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. Approximately 2,839 square feet of retail space on the ground floor 
and 2,555 square feet of storage space in the basement level. Manager Nilesh Patel, closing time 11 p.m. Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Uh, good morning again, everyone. Andrew Upton, Upton, Connell, and Devlin. Uh, thank you again for your consideration on the scheduling. I appreciate that. Uh, with me is Nilesh Patel, uh, the proposed manager of record. We are proposing a new package store at uh, Downtown Crossing. Uh, the character and fitness of this applicant is strong. He has owned a smoke shop right around the corner in Downtown Crossing for several years. Uh, at that store, he has a good record. He sells age-restricted products. It's a 21-plus environment, uh, so he's very familiar with IDing, carding, and denying service to those who do not qualify for it. And he has a great relationship with the landlord, with the budding businesses, with the business improvement district, and with the police, and he knows the area. Uh, his proposal for this shop uh, involves a higher-end product mix, much like he has at the smoke shop to deter bad customers and bad actors. Uh, he wants to focus on quality wines, wine education, craft beers, things that pair with food. Uh, he will also uh, have a 21 plus policy in the store and he will not sell gum, candy or chips or any type of snacks like that that uh, would attract people who are not interested in his premium product mix. Uh, he has also agreed not to sell uh, airline size bottles, kegs, cheap, or cheap single beers. He is a U.S. citizen, a mass resident. He's familiar uh, with the rules and regulations of the board, and he has plenty of experience in service of age-restricted products. We believe there is also a public need uh, for a license at this location. This is at the top of Winter Street. There are currently three empty storefronts where he's proposed of going. However, there are, uh, we've estimated more than 10,000 commuters pass this store every night on their way home. So it's a great potential market. Uh, he is directly in the path of people who may want quality wines or beers to pair with food uh, on their way home. Uh, we will have security cameras. Uh, he has private security. He has detailed police as needed. Uh, he will, in our discussions with BID, MPPNA, and DRA, we emphasize that a clean, well-lighted storefront here will be a safety and amenity enhancement uh, to the downtown crossing corridor, uh, a place which has uh, suffered from a lot of closings and a lot of homeless and a lot of negative activity. Uh, our strategy is to have a clean, well-lighted, welcoming place uh, for good customers uh, that hopefully will deter bad customers and bad activity. Um, we've got a tough landlord and a tough lease that we have shared with the bid. Uh, there's strict re regulations on lighting, on trash removal, uh, on hours. We have agreed to maintain transparent front windows, not only with no offensive advertising, but so customers, businesses, and uh, law enforcement, if needed, can see right in to see what's going on. Um, we have uh, met with the DRA, with the MPPNA. We have met two times with the bid. Um, and from that, we generated uh, a letter of support from bid, which uh, reemphasizes the product restrictions, signage, lighting, window transparency, and uh, contributions to the bid and to the community uh, that we have agreed to as part of our campaign to run a clean, safe, friendly store that contributes to the neighborhood. Uh, with that, we're glad to answer any questions. Uh, thanks for uh, touching upon the public need for this type of license in this location. It's probably submitted in your application, but can you um, tell me today, what is the staffing model? How many people um, on our average shift would be working there? Uh, we discussed this with the bid and the other stakeholders. Uh, Mr. Patel has a higher staffing model than traditional liquor stores that typically have a clerk and a stock person because uh, of the security concerns, because it is a family-run establishment, and because 
his model is predicated on selling higher end, higher margin products, which require a more knowledgeable staff. So Nilesh, if you could confirm, but I believe we said four to six at any given time. Yes, can you guys see me? All right, hiding in the neighborhood of Patel. Uh, yes, so in regards to staffing, uh, roughly give and take between six and eight employees, uh, especially because all the products that we carry are uh, behind the behind the shelving. There's no uh, accessible products that would uh, just be carried over from a customer and brought to the counter base. It's mainly everything behind the counter, so it requires a lot of staffing for customer service presentation and uh, just an explanation on who we are and how, how the products basically are. Okay. Okay, um, I don't have any other questions at this time. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? None at this time, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Chu from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, as previously stated, this proponent had uh, met with the Downtown Red Association, the Downtown Bid, and the Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association. Uh, they have garnered letters of support from both the Downtown Red Association and the Downtown Bid um, under the um under the conditions that they will not sell kegs uh, malt liquor airline size bottles and, and minis um, their support is contingent on those conditions being met and at this time we would like to defer judgment to the board thank you Chu. are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll now return to the top of the agenda, calling item number one. Blank Street 647 Boylston Street, Boston LLC, doing business as Blank Street Coffee, located at 647 Boylston Street, has applied for a common bachelor license to be exercised on the above. One floor, back of house storage area for dry goods on the same floor. Manager Leticia Godwin Ruiz, hours of operation 7:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Anders Cairns here from Blank Street Coffee. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Keynes. If you could just briefly present your proposal to the board. Of course, so this will be our third Boston location. It is a, a quick serve coffee shop. So we have ready-made food prepared by our local vendor, a &J King. Uh, we're currently looking at about an average of 400 people through the doors, which has been a fantastic response at Boston Street. But again, uh, no food preparation on site. We have daily trash carting services in place, pest control in place. Uh, so far, a fantastic response, as I mentioned. Uh, I'm so, sorry, I am also the Director of Retail Growth for the US, so I'm based in New York. Leticia couldn't join us today. She's actually on shift in the space. Uh, this location, all going well, should also act as our training lab and induction space for any new hires that we make. So any new baristas will be trained uh, in the space. We're currently working with the condo board and landlord. We've started the repair and repainting of the entire facade of the space as well. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty simple operation. We're very, very excited to be in Boston. So yeah, we'd love to open up to any questions. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. My only question is, will there be seating here? Uh, yes, there is 12 seats inside. And we are also in the process of hopefully securing uh, an outdoor seating permit also, all going well. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I don't have any questions. No questions for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Maggie Van Scoy from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to this board. Um, during the ZBA community process for this applicant, the takeout use and this CV license were dis 
discussed jointly and the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay did not have any concerns and during our abutters meeting, no concerns were raised. So again, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling item number two, Boston Import LLC doing business as Sip of Joy Cafe and Bakery. Located at 661 Tremont Street in Roxbury, has applied for a common victualler license to be exercised on the above. Entry level coffee shop with a coffee bar counter with bar height stools and a few tables. Accessible basement for storage and office. Also to include a seasonal March to October patio on public property with eight seats, same hours as the coffee shop. Manager Matt Sari, hours of operation 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, all. This is Matt Sari on behalf of Sip of Joy Coffee and Bakery. Thank you, Mr. Sari. Thank you for being with us. If you could just please briefly present your proposal to the board. Certainly. Um, this is a brand new location. It is going to be a family uh, basically owned and operated. I would be the operator. And I had the uh, experience in the hospitality over two decades, and I just would like to utilize those experiences and bring a small coffee shop with the um, baked goods and some sweet and savory goods that is being basically prepared uh, outside of the local vendors and purchase, so there's no kitchen involved. It is eight, 18 to 20 seats, roughly indoor, and during the season, additional couple tables, six to eight seats, total of 25 to 28 seats total. And we will be basically offering 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., as you mentioned. And that we look forward to having our locals coming out, enjoying our coffee shop, and as well as the um, pedestrians, basically at the drive-bys or walk-ins to come and grab their coffees and uh, treats. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Sari. This is, uh, sounds very interesting. I, my only question is, have you already received permission from the city for the outdoor patio space? It's all uh, uh, as part of the application. I'm in the basic wait. It is just going through with the, um, along with your applications. It's all together combined. I have not got any answer, but it is just the applications in the process now. Oh, you submitted it through the outdoor yes. dining process? I'm sorry, say it again? You submitted the application for the outdoor seating through our outdoor dining portal. Is that what you did? Yes. Or part of this application is one? Yes. Okay. It's part of the application. Okay. We'll look into that. Um, just make sure we have everything in place for that. Uh, Commissioner Corona, Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Nothing additional. Thank you. Nothing from me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Kim Crucially from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board on this matter. We've received no concerns um, from the community um, and no questions either, and this would be a great addition to the neighborhood. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much, all. Thank you. <clears throat> Calling item number three, BULLC doing business as BU Bistro, located at 3840 Washington Street in Jamaica Plain. Holder of a common vigilar license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from one room on the first floor, 20 seats with kitchen, bathroom, and storage, to one room on the first floor, 20 seats with kitchen, bathroom, and storage, Front 10 seats and rear 30 seats, seasonal April to October patios on private property, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Manager Patricio Amoroso, hours of operation, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hello, Emiliano Amoroso. How are you? Great, thank you. Thank you for being with us this morning. If you could please uh, briefly present your proposal to the board. Yes, so we are basically a family business. Um, we bought this place like um, six months ago. Um, we are just trying to run the same thing that was there before, a breakfast place, um, lunch, um, dinner, after. Um, we tried to um, use all the space that was there before at the same time, try not to modify too much um, what it was there. Um, like you say, uh, we have um, 30, if I'm not wrong, um, 40 space, um, 40 seats outdoor, 30 on the back, 10 on 
on the front side of the building and then 17 inside. We tried to keep everything, um, like I say, as much as uh, we had before. We only did a couple of um, updates on the inside of the place. Um, we're gonna be a breakfast place, um, coffee shop during um, the morning hours to lunch. And then like, uh, like I say, um, dinner menu, um, basically what, like I said, what was there before. Um, I don't know if you guys have any other questions. Um, so it'll just be breakfast and lunch for now? Yes, um, we have, we're gonna do breakfast, lunch um, during the morning. And then we are actually applying for the B, uh, for the beer, wine, um, spirit license. Okay. On the, on the future for, for the night. Okay. But that's it's in the process right now. Okay, but you're looking to open with just a CV license and then you'll come back to yeah. us if you'd like to add that, okay. Yeah, we're trying to open right now, um, like I say, for breakfast, lunch, like to seven to like three, four. Okay. And once we get the, the license, we're gonna open until um, night. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. Uh, not for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office had to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. I spoke with the previous liaison for this area. Uh, and a butters meeting was held September 28th. Um, and then the applicant went on to meet with the JPNC Public Service Committee, which voted to approve this project. Of that information, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I do see a hand raised from Michael Reiskind. Mr. Reis Mr. Reiskind, do you may please uh, provide your testimony. Hello, my name is Michael Reiskind. I live at 425 South Huntington Avenue in Jamaica Plain, member of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and chair of its Public Service Committee. Um, uh, Mr. Newman is, is did misspeak. We have not had any hearings at all uh, on this uh, applicant at this space. Uh, we have scheduled it for uh, June 6th, and we'd uh, like you to defer the decision uh, until after the community process. It'll only take about uh, two or three weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reiskin. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number four, BYA Inc. doing business as Black Seed, located at 140 Tremont Street. Holder of a common vitular license has petitioned to amend the closing hour of the license business from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. to 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, me, sir. Yusuf, uh, I'm the owner. Uh, great. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. If you could just please uh, briefly present uh, your proposal and the reason to the board. Yes, so uh, Black Seed recently moved into this place at 140 Tremont Street. Uh, we were next door at 131 for the last 27 years. Um, we had a 2.30 a.m. license over there, and um, we'd like to keep the same hours. So we did the whole community process when getting, this, uh, when getting the licensing and zoning. Uh, to move our business from this location to the one next door. And uh, we're just looking to keep our same hours, just add 30 minutes. We do a lot of late night business for all the residents in the community. Uh, never had any problems or anything like that. Uh, we just like to extend the hours. Thank you for joining us today. I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. None at this time, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Our office is unaware of any concerns with this proposal. Thank you. Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in, in opposition to this proposal due to um, just because of um, the closing time of 3 a.m., he doesn't support, it's out of norm for the city. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number five, 20 Charlesgate LLC doing business as Our Lady's Guild House, located at 20 Charlesgate West, has applied for a lodging house license to be exercised on the above. A six story building, three rooms on the first floor, 27 rooms on the second floor, 28 rooms on the third floor, 27 rooms on the fourth floor, 27 rooms on the fifth floor, and 28 rooms on the sixth floor. Manager David Lennar, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm attorney Connor McIsaac from Goulson & Stores, located at 400 Atlantic Avenue in Boston. Here on behalf of the applicant, 20 Charles Gate LLC, a joint venture between the Planning Office for Urban Affairs and the Fenway Community Development Corporation. Uh, with me today is Philip Crean from the Planning Office for Urban Affairs, Edward Quinn from the Fenway Community Development Corporation, and David Lanier and Adam Keenley from Puberty Properties, the proposed property manager and the manager of record on the application. Uh, we are here today seeking a lodging house license for the property located at 20 Charles Gate West off of Commonwealth Avenue. Uh, as a little background, uh, this property is an existing lodging house and has been for decades. Uh, we are making this application by the consent and uh, uh, authorization of the current owner, uh, Our Lady's Guild House. Uh, the applicant has agreed to purchase the property, and in connection with this purchase, the applicant is seeking this new lodging house license. Uh, I will now turn the discussion over to Philip Crane, who can speak as to the organization and the operations of the property. Thanks, Connor. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, just to give you a little bit of a uh, background on, on the, uh, the, the the property. It's a 140 room uh, SRO building currently serving uh, women in Kenmore Square. Um, there is a common laundry services in the uh, basement, uh, community rooms and uh, kitchens on the first floor, uh, kitchen nets scattered throughout the, the on, on all the other floors, uh, shared bathrooms, um, throughout and a couple of full size kitchens on the upper floors. Um, all tenants are currently on one year leases and we will uh, continue to implement that as we uh, take ownership of the property in uh, mid July, early August. Uh, PVD Properties will be our, our manager where you know, we, we are familiar with them on uh, the planning office side um, as they manage a number of our properties and then they also manage uh, uh, Fenway CBC's uh, portfolio. Um, we're going to have a property manager at the building every day, and we'll have a uh, um, maintenance staff available 24-7. So uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, thank you very much. So um, PPD Properties will be the overall manager for the, for the house. I'm sorry, did you say there'll be an on-site manager too? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon? No questions for me. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Hello again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Maggie Vanskoy from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. The Fenway CDC completed extensive community outreach for this proposal. We also received letters in support. Um, a letter in support of this application from the Charles Gate Alliance and a letter in non-opposition from the Fenway Civic Association. Thank you. It's an added note from me, Adam Kenny, uh, Executive Vice President of Operation for PBD Properties. We're the managing agent. Uh, we manage over approximately 15,000 units uh, in our portfolio, just under 5,000 units within the city of Boston. We manage a combined th over 1,000 units. Uh, for both the ent ownership entities involved here in this job, uh, and we've worked well with them in the past. Any questions, if you have for us, happy to entertain any of those. Thank you, Mr. Kenny. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number six has been previously heard. Calling item number seven, Eddie Merlot's LLC. Doing business as Eddie Merlot is located at 505 Congress Street. Holder of a common victual or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Paul Braun to Jared Franklin Myers III, who is present on behalf of the applicant. 
Hi, good morning. Uh, Tyler Hensler from Upton, Canal, and Devlin here uh, for Eddie Merlos. Uh, with me is the proposed manager of record, Gerald Myers. Uh, I believe I saw him in here. Uh, Mr. Myers is a, a U.S. citizen. He is a Massachusetts resident. He is familiar with the rules and regulations regarding the sale and service of alcohol uh, of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and of this board. Um, and he has extensive experience in the industry, uh, working as an executive chef at various restaurants uh, since 2008. So we are lucky to have him. Um, and there will be no other changes in the operations. Uh, we're happy to take any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. No questions for me either. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number eight, Citizen M of Boston North Station Operations LLC, doing business as Citizen M Hotel, located at 70 Causeway Street. Holder of an in-holder all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Justine Mayhem to Jessica Common, uh, Attorney Tom Miller. Attorney Miller. Thank you, Danny. Uh, good morning, Chairwoman Joyce, Commissioners Tom Miller from McDermott, Quilty & Miller in Boston on behalf of the licensee, Citizen M. I'm joined today by Jessica Kaufman, uh, the proposed manager. Uh, Jessica is a U.S. citizen. She is a resident of Dorchester, has experience in the food and beverage industry, and is familiar with the laws of the Commonwealth, the rules of the ABCC, um, and this board for the sale and service of alcoholic beverages. She has been in the hospitality industry for more than 10 years, both serving alcohol and supervising those who do. Um, we want to thank you for hearing this application today and would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions at this time. I'll hold off in case questions come up through the other testimony. Thank you, Commissioner Kern or Commissioner Saxon. Any questions? No questions for me. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Calling item number nine, GTI Properties, Inc., doing business as the power station located at 530 Harrison Ave in Roxbury. Holder of a general on-premise all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of manager of the license business from Jeffrey Gates to Sean Fitzgerald. And secondly, has petitioned for the approval of a management agreement between GTI Properties, Inc. and the Catered Affair, Inc. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, uh, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the uh, applicant under the management agreement with me this morning is uh, Sean Fitzgerald, the proposed manager of record, and Alex Marconi, who is the uh, owner operator of the Catered Affair. This is a uh, an application for uh, a change of manager. Obviously, Mr. Fitzgerald has a great background in the food and beverage industry. Works has worked in the past for the Lions Group, the Summers Group. Uh, as is a mass resident and a U.S. citizen, uh, the management agreement is to allow for the operations at the so-called power station, which is within the SOA uh, uh, operation, if you will, um, on Harrison Avenue in the South End. Uh, it's basically an area that's been used for functions and events and parties and, <clears throat> and things of that nature over the many years. Uh, and the operation to change today is only to have the catered affair or a well-known and uh, respected uh, catering licensee to take over those operations. They, as the board knows, uh, are the operators at the Boston Public Library and many other uh, large operations in the city of Boston uh, with a fabulous background and record. And um, those are the only changes proposed. And Mr. Marconi and Mr. Fitzgerald are with us this morning. For any questions you may have. I have no questions, thank you. No questions for me. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter? <clears throat> or will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling in number 10, Powder Dry Inc. doing business as the Leader Bank Pavilion <clears throat> located at 290 Northern Ave. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to provide bottle service on their license premise. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning again, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Dennis Quilty representing the applicant. With us this morning, Joseph Dunn, uh, Michael Sheehan, and 
perhaps Declan Megan, I'm not sure, uh, all together who operate in our powder dry, which is the licensee at the Leader Bank Pavilion. The application is for a single area to have bottle service within the seated box area at the pavilion. So this is very limited in scope. It is literally a one, uh, one off, if you will, location wherein bottle service is being requested. We've provided uh, plans and renderings, as well as a, di a diagram showing where within that box area, seating area, this would be taking place. So it is literally very limited to one specific location. We expect it would be utilized for a small corporate event or a private event, uh, et cetera, that uh, one would book the box, if you will, and then in that area, they would be allowed to have bottle service. And uh, hopefully you've got the, the plans in front of you it's just to, to locate everything and show you the, the design of the, uh, of the systems and the service area. And of course it will be staffed uh, and all service will be done by the uh, servers employed by the um, powder dry uh, individual who are the catering entity for the pavilion. And we have uh, we have reached out to uh, the mayor's office of native neighbor neighborhood services who asked us to notify the Four Point Neighborhood Association, which we have done, have received no uh, concerns from them. Uh, we've also addressed this with the South Boston elected officials meeting, uh, and they were fully supportive of our application. And certainly happy to take any of your questions. So the management doesn't change, the other operations don't change. It's literally this one limited area. Thank you, Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? Uh, can you just describe for the record right now the staffing model? I'm, I'm just pulling up the file. How many staff will be assigned to the tables? I can't. Um... Joe, is Mike with us this morning? Uh, I think he is, but it, it, it's it's only one box, so there'll be only one one staff per box. Okay. And how many seats in that box? Uh, anywhere capacity when it's tight would be twenty people, but probably average fifteen. Okay. Thank you. Um... I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. Uh, no, no questions, questions for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The proponent reached out to the Fort Point Neighborhood Association about this proposal. FPNA requested site plans on where the bottle service would be located, which the proponent then provided. We are unaware of any further questions or concerns. At this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on recording support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Oh, I do see a hand raised. Uh, Mary Karski from Council Flaherty's office. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Uh, yes, Madam Chair and members of the board, Council of Flaherty would also like to go on record in support. So. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 11, Shake Shack Seaport Boston LLC, located at 77 Seaport Boulevard, holder of a common Gitchler seven-day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license, has petitioned to amend the closing hour of the licensed business from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? That would be me. My name is Patrick Dowd. I'm here representing Shake Shack Seaport Boston LLC, doing business as Shake Shack. Uh, we are applying to uh, extend our hours from 11, or sorry, from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. closing every day. Um, we did uh, receive a letter of support from the Four Point Neighborhood Association. Um, and I'm here to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you, Chairman. Trace, any questions? Mike? Uh, one question not relative to the extension of the hour. Are you still working with transportation on um, a solution for the um, third-party delivery service stuff? 
That is correct. Um, I am not involved in that process at this time, but in our letter of support that came from Tom of the uh, Four Point Neighborhood Association, he said they're currently uh, still working to install 15 minute parking and pickup um, for the delivery zone in front of our establishment. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that um, update. I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioners? Uh, none for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Shake Shack in this location has been the site of numerous through and one complaints about double parked cars and blocked bike lanes. The proponent, along with the Four Point Neighborhood Association, WS Development, and ONS, has worked with the Boston Transportation Department to have more 15 minute pickup and drop off locations near the site to mitigate that issue. FPNA supports Shake Shack extending their hours with the additional pickup drop off locations. ONS has received one letter of opposition to this proposal due to the numerous thrown one complaints about double parking at this location. That email has been shared with this board. At this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ana Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The counselor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number 12, Sweet Rice JP Inc. doing business as Sweet Rice JP, located at 695 to 697 Center Street in Jamaica Plain, holder of a calming victualler, seven day wines and malt beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Pichai Chiratana Wanit to Pradit Sakara. Secondly, has petitioned for a change of officers directors. And lastly, has petitioned for a change in stock interest. Uh, who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, Attorney John Leone of Arlington here with Pradet Sakara, who's somewhere on this Zoom. Um, we're here today to seek the change of manager, change of stock interest, and change of officers for St Sweet Rice JP at 697 Center Street in JP. They've held this license since approximately 2019, early 2019. Um, and Pradet has been the house manager, the front of the house manager in that time. He is coming on as an owner and is going to become an officer. And um, we want to change him to be the manager of the location. He has uh, restaurant experience and has been in either the front of the house manager or server since uh, early 2016 and before that as well. Um, <clears throat> they've had no complaints uh, that I'm aware of by any. Um, department or any other units within the city. So we're open for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Is Mr. Sakara here? Uh, I yes. Didn't see him. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I didn't see you down there. Uh, Mr. Sakara, your attorney covered some of the manager of record questions, but to make sure I have them all on the record, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? Yes. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay, um, at this time, I have no further questions. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon? Uh, no, no questions, questions for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? <laughs> are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling item number 13, Rock Lobster Co. Inc. doing business as Yankee Lobster Fish Market, located at 300 Northern Ave. Holder of a common victual or 70 wines and malt beverages license, has petitioned to change the category of the license business to a common victual or 70 wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license, pursuant to the authority contained in Chapter 481 of the Acts of 1994. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning again, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the applicant. Uh, with me this morning, Joe and Michael Zanti, who are the family-owned uh, uh, operators of this location, Yankee Lobster, very, very famous location in the seaport area for many, many years. Uh, they have increasingly, over the last probably 10 years, 
uh, added more food service and seating to this establishment. It's become much more of a destination for dining as well as for uh, you know, casual dining, but more so now uh, with their uh, relationship to the rest of the seaport properties, the growing hotel and residences in the area, and Leader Bank Pavilion immediately next door, they've become a very popular destination for dining. Um, and they've, uh, they're have seeking to add to their license the liqueurs um, to uh, have you know increased service for their patrons. Uh, no other changes whatsoever, no changes of hours, capacity, or style of operation. <clears throat> this would just be an amenity for their, um, their customers. And um, again, no other changes proposed. And we are happy to take any of your questions. We did reach out to uh, uh, Neighborhood Services and were asked uh, again to reach out to Four Point Neighborhood Association, which we did. They had no concerns. We were not required to hold an abutters meeting. Um, and we're unaware of any opposition as we appear before you this morning and happy to take your questions. Thank you, attorney. Um, I have no questions at this time. No questions for me. Thank you. <clears throat> and for me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The proponent reached out to the Four Point Neighborhood Association about this proposal. We're unaware of any questions or concerns. At this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you so much. Good Thanks, morning. Madam. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Fling's office. The councilor would like to go on record support. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Along item number 14, GRNARK of Mass LLC, doing business as Ramsey's Kitchen, located at 776 Boylston Street. Holder of a common victual or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from a full-service restaurant of approximately 7,196 square feet located within the street level of the Mandarin Oriental Hotel, main dining room, two private dining rooms, kitchen and bar, Main entrance exit located on Boylston Street with additional entrance exit from the hotel lobby. Sidewalk cafe located on Boylston Street at the main entrance of the restaurant with seating for 26, approximately 73 square feet. Cafe open from April 1st to October 31st. Fencing around cafe will be removed when closed and hours are the same as the restaurant except will close no later than 10 p.m. Cafe is on public property and will comply with the Public Improvement Commission conditions set forth in and approved in assignment and assumption agreement. Two. Premises consist of full service restaurant of approximately 7,196 square feet, located within the street level of the Mandarin Oriental Hotel, main dining room, two private dining rooms, kitchen, main bar, and service bar. Sidewalk Cafe, located on Boylston Street at the main entrance of the restaurant with seating for 26, approximately 73 square feet. Cafe open from April 1st to October 31st. Fencing around cafe will be removed when closed and hours are the same as the restaurant, except will close no later than 10 p.m. Main entrance exit located on Boylston Street with additional entrance exit from the hotel lobby. Cafe is on public property and will comply with the Public Improvement Commission conditions as set forth in and approved in assignment and assumption agreement. Attorney Eugene Richard. Attorney Richard. Uh, thank you, Attorney Green, for reading that long mouthful. And, uh, and uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, I am here for the applicant and with me on the uh, video is uh, Michael Botello, the on-premises manager. Um, to distill the uh, change in, in description, we are asking for approval for installation of service bar in the middle of the dining room near the kitchen ramp walkway. Uh, that would replace the existing raw bar and counter seating for eight. So uh, because that involves alcohol, uh, it is a relatively minor change, but uh, we were advised to, to, to change the description or request change of the description. Uh, the service bar will be used to prepare beverages and provide them to wait staff to bring to customers dining at tables in the restaurant. Uh, the main bar has seating uh, right there and uh, it was felt that the service bar without seating might be more efficient and appropriate. Uh, the main bar will remain uh, with the seating for customers, uh, 
but uh, this service bar will be available and, uh, and just dedicated to uh, table service. Uh, there are no associated changes to the square footage, entrances or exits or otherwise operationally. And um, pending any questions, uh, we request your approval for the uh, alteration as described. So just to confirm, we're just adding a service bar. That's correct, which will be replacing the uh, current uh, uh, raw bar for CP. Okay. Uh, thank you. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. No, no questions, questions for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Yes, hello, Madam Chair, members of the board, Maggie Van Scoy from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. The Neighborhood Association of Back Bay is in non-opposition to this proposal and our office is unaware of any concerns at this time. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you, are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank and you. calling item 15, GRNA GRB of Mass LLC, doing business as Gordon Ramsey Burger, located at 120 John F. Fitzgerald Surface Road, holder of a common vitual or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from premise consists of a full service restaurant on two levels first floor with three dining areas, bar, kitchen, storage, and restrooms. Second level with 676 square feet of interior space containing internal staircase, elevator, and service station, and a seasonal March to November 1,811 square foot outdoor terrace on private property with dining, bar, and lounge and seating for 89. Outdoor terrace hours no later than 11 p.m. Alcohol service from 11 a.m. on Sundays, general hours of operation are 10 p.m. Sunday to Thursday, 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Two, premises consist of a full service restaurant on two levels. First floor is approximately 4,082 square feet with three dining areas, bar, kitchen, and three storage areas and restrooms. Second level with 676 square foot interior space containing internal staircase, elevator, and service station, and a seasonal March to November 1,811 square foot outdoor terrace on private property with dining, lounge, and seating for 89. Outdoor terrace hours no later than 11 p.m. Alcohol service from 11 a.m. Sundays. General hours of operation 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Attorney Richard, once again. Uh, thank you again. And um, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Green. Uh, with me uh, for this uh, matter is Michael Botello, who's the on premises uh, manager. Excuse me, <laughs> Michael Grigioni, who is the on premises manager at uh, Boston Burger. Uh, this involves two change, uh, pl we're applying for two changes. One is uh, approval for the addition of approximately 231 square feet to the premises, which would be uh, a, a sort of a large closet area to store and refrigerate approximately four beer kegs. And secondly, to remove the previously approved bar and bar seating on the second level outdoor terrace. So as to the first matter, that storage space, uh, the proposed additional space is located on the first floor of the building uh, across an interior hallway from the approved premises. Uh, the kegs in the additional space uh, will be connected by uh, service lines uh, run above the ceiling over into the other space um, to beer taps at the restaurant's bar. The additional space will not be accessible to the public. Uh, the entrance to the space will be controlled by uh, uh, key cards and there will be no sale, service or consumption of alcoholic beverages in that additional space. Um, to, uh, turning to the second matter, uh, the bar and associated seating uh, on the uh, second floor uh, were not constructed mainly due, I understand, to concerns about having it exposed to the weather year round. Uh, also, the uh, uh, alcohol service will still be accessible at that outdoor terrace, but it was determined that um, adequate service could be provided 
uh, from the second floor service area, which uh, uh, is um, interior and, and not accessible to the public. So uh, pending any questions on those two matters, uh, we do request your approval for the alteration requested. Thank you for that explanation. Um, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? No questions for me, thank you. None for me either, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. As we understand it, uh, the applicant had really positive meetings with the Wharf District Council, as well as the uh, NURA organization in the North End. Um, we're unaware of any concerns at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling item number 16, Shivam Baba Corp doing business as Atlas Liquors, located at 591 Hyde Park Ave in Roslindale. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Brooks Select Wine and Spirits, LLC, doing business as Brooks Wine and Spirits at the same location. Naomi R. Malibri, manager, closing hour 11 p.m. And lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license to Eastern Bank. Attorney Lou Cassis. Attorney Cassis. Good morning, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Louis Cassis for Brooks, Brooks Select Fine Wine and Spirits. This is an application for a transfer. That lo, that lo, uh, Atlas Liquors has been its location for many, many years, and um, there'll be a transfer. It will involve no real change to the operation uh, with Naomi Malabre being the manager of record. Um, Naomi is a citizen, a resident. She's familiar with the laws and rules and regulations of the ABCC and the Boston Licensing Board. And she has experience in the, in the industry. She is trained with the present owners for the last several weeks. And uh, she's gonna hire a full-time manager also that's very experienced in, um, in, in, in sale of alcoholic beverages and the rules and regulations of the board and the Commonwealth. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we're available. We're also, I'm sorry, asking for a trans, I, I pledge of the license also to Easton Bank for part of the, um, for the purchase price of this, of this location. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for joining us today, Ms. Malabra. And thank you, Attorney Cassis, for um, explaining all that to us. Um, I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. No questions for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Diana Bronchuk for the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This business held in a butters meeting that had low attendance. The representative, the representative has reached out to the area's neighborhood association, as well as the Roslindale Business Group. It did not receive any concerns. Our office has not received any concerns from the community. At this time, we defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 17, Burn LLC, doing business as Whaling in Oklahoma, located at 645 to 647 Tremont Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to PAG Tremont LLC at the same location. The Rackley Gogadice manager, Secondly, has petitioned to amend the description of premise from 645 to 647 Tremont Street, street level basement, street level cafe, dining room kitchen, storage and utility room, and an outdoor seasonal patio for 10 persons, and in two rooms at 645 Tremont Street, adjoining space, with main entrance exit onto Tremont Street and exit in rear, storage, office, and restrooms in basement, and extended outdoor seasonal patio in front of premises for 10 persons, capacity breakdown, restaurant 71, cafe 35, Two, premises located at 647 Tremont Street, street level includes approximately 1,000 square foot seating for 71, includes basement, dining room, bar area, open kitchen, and one restroom, basement level approximately 500 square foot seating for 31, includes dining room, bar, three restrooms, prep kitchen, and dishwashing and storage, two entrances exits at street level, one exit at basement level, seasonal March to November outdoor patio, with seating for 10 on public sidewalk containing 170 square feet. Patio will be open Sunday through Thursday until 10 p.m. 
Friday and Saturday until 10.30 p.m. Closing hour 1 a.m. Lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license and inventory to Eagle Bank. Attorney Benjamin Levin. Attorney Levin. Good morning, Attorney Green. Good morning, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, that was very well said and very well read. Um, our client has owned and operated many establishments throughout the city, specifically in the South End neighborhood. Uh, we have spoken to the mayor's office. They did not require a hearing or a community process as part of this. Um, as Attorney Green mentioned, there will also be a pledge of the license to Eagle Bank as part of this approval. Our client is a citizen of the United States, is a resident of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, does have experience operating similar establishments for many years, and is aware of the rules and regulations of the Commonwealth of Maths, as well as the ABCC. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions at this time. Um, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran? No questions for me. Thank you. And for me, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crusoe from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board on this matter. We've received no questions or concerns from the community. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. And you. On item number 18, Viva Burrito Boston, Inc. doing business as Viva Burrito, located at 66 Stanford Street. Holder of a common victualler 70 wines and malt beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Sushi Washin, Inc. doing business as Washin, located at 222 Stewart Street. Premise consists of the restaurant will be located on the ground level of the building with approximately 1,246 square feet, including waiting area, dining area, seating for 20, front kitchen and bar back kitchen prep area and storage, and two unisex bathrooms. Closing hour 12 a.m. You can woo manager who is present on behalf of the applicant. Good morning, Anne Marie Johnine for. Um... Sushi Washing Inc., DBA Washing, which is a Massachusetts corporation. Um, you Can Wu is with me. Um, this is a restaurant located on the ground floor of 222 Stewart Street, which is a new residential building. Um, the entrance is on Stewart Street and it's bordered by Shawmut and Charles Street. Um, the restaurant is 1,256 square feet. Again, it's a transfer of a seven day wine and malt license. Um, there's going to be eight table seats, 12 bar seats. It's an omakase sushi restaurant, which literally means um, putting faith in the chef. Um, the chef, it's, it's an artistic presentation where the chef prepares a variety of dishes of his choosing, depending on the season, um, the main beverage being sake. The hours would be for dining from four to midnight. Um, there is no walk-in service. There's no takeout service. There's no patio use. Um, reservations are necessary. The dining time is approximately two hours. So the last reservation taken would be for nine or 9.30. Um, so everyone, including the four or five employees would be out by midnight. Um, there is a dumpster located inside the building and that's where the trash will be brought out daily down the, down the, the street to the indoor dumpster. So there'll be no trash locate um, containers located outside. There's also a loading dock inside the building. So that's where all the deliveries will be made. Um, there is no parking, but there are numerous area garages. And again, being located near the theater district and the, and the hotels, mm -hmm. we're, we're expecting walking traffic. Um, in front of the building on Stewart Street, it's a drop-off area only. Um, there has been a crosswalk, a new crosswalk um, between um, Charles Street and Stewart Street that was added. Um, the building management company is trying to make arrangements with Motor Mart Garage to get some reserved parking spots. That's a work in progress. Um, we have met twice with the BVNA favorably. Um, we've been in contact with Kim Crucioli um, and Councillor Flynn's office. Um, Mr. Wu, who's here, is a, is a U.S. citizen. He's a resident of Quincy. He has 20 years experience in the restaurant business, most recently at Charlie's Philly Steakhouse in Boston. 
um, and he is familiar with the rules and regs of the licensing board. Thank you. Uh, thank you, attorney. Uh, thank you for your explanation today. Mr. Wu, is that you under Tony Wu? Hi, how are you today? Good, thank you for joining us. I just wanted to confirm that was you. Um, and just to elaborate, what is your experience in the food and beverage industry? I know your attorney briefly described it, but could you give us some more specifics? Yes, I have been in the uh, Asian concept restaurant for over 15 years. And I also been working as a salesperson, you know, about 10 years ago and for a few years. Okay. So, uh, you know, right recently I've been doing the, uh, you know, Tory Japan restaurants in the uh, Boston area too. So I'm familiar with the uh, board, you guys in a, in a, you know, on a meeting too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? Uh, no questions for me. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? <clears throat> Yes. Um, hi again. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crucially from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to defer to the board at this time. The applicant did extensive community <laughs> outreach and met with the Bay Village Neighborhood Association twice, from which they received a letter of support. The community is extremely excited about this addition to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 19 and a companion application, item number 20. Hale Marketing, Inc. doing business as the Dogwood Cafe, located at 3712 Washington Street in Jamaica Plain. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to CT Eatery LLC, doing business as Urban Wild, located at 100 D Hood Park Drive in Charlestown. Premises consist of in one large room on ground floor with main entrance at 100 D Hood Park Drive, consisting of dining areas with bar, including stage area, together with indoor patio with bar and seating, for a total of 430 persons, as well as a seasonal April to November outdoor patio and bar on private property, with seating for 139 persons, and 11 p.m. outdoor closing hour. Restrooms, office, and storage space, kitchen located in rear, additional lounge and seating areas located in rear, together with 14 bowling lanes, indoor closing hour 2 a.m., Peter Simonelli manager. And item number 20, CT Eatery LLC, doing business as Urban Wild, also located at 100 Hood Park Drive in Charlestown, has applied for a license to operate 14 bowling lanes on the above premises, as described in the uh, previous item, Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty? Morning again, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the applicant for transfer of the license. Uh, this is a very exciting, I'm sorry, excuse me, with me is Peter Simonelli, who's the proposed manager of record and also involved in the ownership. Uh, this is a very exciting uh, proposal for the Hood campus as it continues to be developed in the Charlestown neighborhood. Uh, these uh, individuals who are the owners and operators of this uh, proposed uh, location operate numerous other restaurants in Boston. Um, Lily's uh, on Battery March Street, Finn Point in the uh, Hilton Hotel on Broad Street, the Tradesmen uh, in two locations, um, and uh, they're extremely well thought of and, and um competent managers and owners and operators. And Mr. Simonelli is part of that team. He's the proposed manager. Uh, this is a an application for uh, a renovation of this uh, space in the Hood campus to create this restaurant, uh, as well as the bowling operation, um, outdoor dining, et cetera. Uh, we have had extensive outreach in the community. We've met on numerous occasions with the Charlestown Neighborhood Council. Uh, we had a meeting one-on-one -on -one with District City Councilor Coletta. Uh, we had an abutters meeting run by the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, which was well attended. And we are uh, happy to say there have been few, if any, complaints. People are looking forward to this operation coming to this site. Uh, it's a, a large site, but people were very happy with the background and experience of the owners and operators and with their plans for making this a community space and a friendly space. 
um, et cetera. So uh, with that, we are happy to answer any of your questions. Mr. Simonelli, I think, is an approved manager by this board. He's certainly a U.S. citizen, a mass resident, and has uh, ample experience in uh, food and beverage. Uh, Mr. Simonelli, are you a manager presently? I'm not uh, of record, but I am an operations manager within the company. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think we did, you covered the questions, so I am satisfied with those. I have no questions about this application, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. I have no questions. Thank you. None for me either. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? <clears throat> Madam Chair, members of the board, Sean Breen with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, as previously stated, and a butters meeting was held for Urban Wild on March 13th. It was well attended uh, with all comments being made in support. Furthermore, proponents of Urban Wild met with the Charleston Neighborhood Council multiple times, um, and they took part in their basic service committee meeting on the 23rd, which resulted in the CNC, the Charleston Neighborhood Council, pending a letter in support of Urban Wild in their pursuit of an alcohol entertainment license. With that, uh, this office defers judgment to the board. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 21, Upland Restaurant LLC, located at 745 Boylston Street, holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to BC One Congress Tower subsidiary LLC, located at One Congress Street. Premises consist of, comprise of the entirety of the 11th floor of One Congress Street, inclusive of dining lounge areas and bar in one large room, 313 seats indoors, together with kitchen and service areas, restrooms and storage, and function rooms and annual outdoor terrace on private property, with additional seating and event spaces, 276 seats outdoors. 2 a.m. indoor closing hour, 2 a.m. outdoor closing hour. William Goldenberg, manager, lastly has petitioned for an approval of a management agreement between BC One Congress Tower Subsidiary LLC and Aramac Services, Inc. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning again, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, representing the applicant for the transfer of this license. Uh, with me this morning is uh, William Goldenberg, who is the proposed manager of record. Uh, Patrick Brown representing the uh, building ownership, um, and we are here to discuss this very exciting proposal. This is the new One Congress Street building going up uh, just across from City Hall, which I'm sure you're all familiar with the location. Um, the uh, Basically, the redo of the uh, monolithic parking garage at this location to become this uh, Congress Street tower. This will be the headquarters for State Street, uh, and we're very, very excited to bring this proposal forward this morning. The application is basically to provide a, um, a, a, a tenant amenity. It is the 11th floor of this building. Uh, the outdoor area is, again, on the 11th floor, uh, as is the rest of this um, area. This is uh, exclusive of uh, another uh, operation which is taking place at another location in the building. Uh, there is a, a restaurant that's recently been approved for the lower levels. This application has nothing to do with that. It's a separate uh, definition of space, separate location, et cetera. Um, we have had a, um, a great deal of outreach with, uh, we've met with uh, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services who required us only to flyer. Uh, we then had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the residential uh, building, which is our neighbor. Uh, we have made uh, discussed this application with Councilor Flynn's office, and we have met with the West End Civic Association. Uh, and during those meetings, of course, we answered questions about the use, uh, and we believe that the um, that there is no opposition to this application as we arrived before you here this morning, and we are happy to take any of your questions. Thank you very much. And Mr. Goldenberg is here with us. Um, so is this gonna be open to the public or is it a private? You said it's, it's an amenity for, like, can you explain a little bit more? Well, it's, it's an amenity for the, <clears throat> for the space primarily, but it's also gonna be used for, functions and things of that nature. So it's actually kind of a combined 
if you will, amenity to the space and open to the public because they'll be there for functions okay. and events such as uh, um, you know that. So dinners, speakers, uh, uh, you know, event space use and functions for a lot of uses, but it, it's it's to be as well an amenity for the um, major tenants in this building. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, and Mr. Goldenberg is here. Yes. Mr. Goldenberg, just unmute yourself, please. There um, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I have no questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. No questions for me. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Um, we held an abutters meeting on January 31st. Uh, we're, we've received no comments from the abutters who were contacted and no concerns have been raised to our office. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on recording support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 22, Stephanopoulos, Inc., doing business as Decoupa's Pizza, located at 474 Saratoga Street in East Boston. Has applied for a BYOB, bring your own bottle license to be exercised on the approved temporary seasonal May to October patio on public property located along Chelsea Street, seating for 30. Hours of operation, 11 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., seven days per week. Manager, Sotira Stephanopoulos, closing time, 11 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Um, me, Sotira. Great. Good morning. Uh, should I go? Please do. Please <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, Board, and uh, Attorney Green. Uh, my name is Sotira Stephanopoulos. I am a U.S. citizen residing in Massachusetts. I have um, over 30 years experience in the restaurant business, and I am familiar with the rules of the licensing board and ABC. And we are applying for BYOB uh, to keep this uh, business going. Hopefully, and uh, that's it. Sorry, a little nervous. No, thank you. You're doing a great job. Um, so how long have you been in business at this location? Uh, the restaurant's been here for close to 60. My family's owned it for over 40. Okay. So the idea is um, trying to bring another amenity to your yeah. place yep. and you're looking for BYOB? Correct. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was applying for a BYOB. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so can you tell us how you'll staff that? So sure. We'll have uh, well, everybody will be fully trained. Um, we will hire, we're doing new hires, so they'll have extensive training. Okay. And how many um, tables? This will be for the 30 seats. Yep. How does, that break, how does that break down? How many tables is that? Uh, I think it was uh, eight. Okay. Okay. Um, this is a, an interesting application. I appreciate you bringing it forward for us today to take a look at. Thank you. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions at this point? This, are there indoor seats too or no? No. Okay. Nothing else. Thank you. Thank you. No questions from me. Thank you. Um, Thank just, you. Uh, so, Tiara, just oh. to be clear, um, so you can't have this alcohol service start before 5 p.m. Yeah, 5 p.m. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. And you're going to have, this is only going to apply to the patio area. Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. And that will be, oh. that will be seated dinner service out there? Yes, two wait staffs. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Great. Yep. Okay. Thank you for explaining Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Um, we are unaware of any concerns from neighbors, uh, and we heard from many residents that they were excited to have another patio where they could enjoy a glass of wine. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Sebastian Parra with Councillor Colores office and the Councillor would like to go in support of this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.
Calling item number 23, Marino's Market Inc. doing business as Marino's Market and Deli, located at 1906 Center Street, has applied for a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. Premises consist of a first floor sales floor with storage room in the back that is not accessible to customers. Checkout counter is located near the customer entrance exit. There is also a locked storage area and an office in the basement, which is also not accessible to customers. Customer entrance exit opens onto Center Street. One emergency exit is located off the first floor storage area, and one is located in the basement. Manager Paul Marino, closing time 10 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hi, Paul Marino. I'm the owner of Marino's Markets. Um, so we are seeking a um, package license for um, malt and um, malt beverages and wine. Um, and uh, we already have another um, license in our other location. It's a full uh, liquor license. Um, and I've been, um, I've had a license um, uh, with alcohol since uh, 2003. Um, and I've had um, no issues at all. And um, our staff is very well trained. Um, our clientele, um, the, the location on Central Street is primarily an international market. Um, focusing on internationally um, imported foods, um, and our customers are um, have are seeking this uh, to uh, make uh, to add convenience to the to the shopping experience at the location. Um, and so we really wanted to uh, provide that convenience and service to the community, um, and we think it will be a huge benefit for all involved. Mr. Marino, did you say you're already approved by this board as a manager of record? Uh, I have another, uh, we have two, two locations and I already am a man manager in the other location. In Boston? Yes. Okay, what, what are those locations? It's the Marino's Market in Delhi at 1245 VFW Parkway in West Roxbury. Okay, okay. Um, and how long, uh, how long have you been at this location? Uh, since, 2010. Okay, and what percentage 2012. of- I'm sorry, 2012. Okay, and what percentage of your floor area are you going to set aside for the sale of- um, um, No more than uh, two or 3%. Okay. Um, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? Not this time, thank you. None for me, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Our office held an abutters meeting on May 2nd. The only concerns that were brought up were around trash, uh, but those were addressed by the applicant. Um, they then went on to the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council, where it unanimously passed uh, in the vote last night. Uh, with that information, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number 24 has been previously heard. Calling item number 25, East Boston BBQ LLC, doing business as the Smoke Shop BBQ, located at 45 Lewis Street in East Boston. Has applied for a common victualler seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above, 4,034 square foot total, on ground floor in two rooms seating for 102, including one main dining room and one bar room with bar seating, bar dining seating, and bar rail. Kitchen storage and offices located in rear. Year-round outdoor patio, weather permitting, on private property, seating for 116. Patio closing hour, 11 p.m. Manager Amy Magner, closing time, 1 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hi, good morning, Attorney Green. Leslie Delaney Hawkins with the law firm of Prince Lobel Tai. I'm here today on behalf of my colleague, Kristen Scanlon, who is out on maternity leave. Uh, if this proposal sounds familiar, it's because this is the third time that the board has heard it and has approved twice previously pending availability of a license, either restricted or otherwise, obviously no license for which this licensee qualified for became available. Um, I will not belabor the point. This is a uh, currently a fully built out restaurant at this point. It's full service barbecue with the closing hour of 1 a.m. and a year round outdoor patio with the closing hour of 11 p.m. 
Amy Magner is the proposed manager of record who has been pre previously approved by this board, is a US citizen, has experience in the food and beverage industry, is a resident of the Commonwealth, and is familiar with the rules of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol. Again, there are no changes to what has been previously proposed. We're just looking to uh, continue moving this application forward should a license become available. Uh, thank you. I have no questions. Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon? No questions. Thank you. None from me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, previously, there was a community process that was done under the previous administration. Our office is not aware of any concerns, and we understand that many residents are excited for this business to open. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Those are all of the items before the board this morning that will adjourn this morning's hearing. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.